Why don't subwoofers offer a high pass filter? Good question. And it comes from Bob in Sedalia, Missouri. Most all powered subwoofers have a built in low pass crossover adjustment, which is true. It's usually between 40 and 200 hertz. So, why don't any of them incorporate a complementary high pass crossover so that the lowest frequencies are rolled off from the main speakers? Wouldn't eliminating the lowest frequencies from the main speaker result in lower distortion, greater power handling, and clarity? Well, the quick answer is. You're right. Rolling off the main speaker would give just, your list is perfect. It would result in lower distortion because we have less low frequency movement, uh, greater power handling because now whatever power you have can be applied in areas where less power is needed, and, and greater clarity. All that's true. So why wouldn't you do that? Well, there's a couple reasons. First, we have to define what we're talking about, which is usually a pretty good idea. <laughs> that just sounded funny when it came out. Oh, goodness. Anyway, I, I don't want to get off onto a tangent. Like, why my frickin' nose always itches every time I start. Have you ever done that? You pick up something and you're fine. Like, you scratch, you itch, you do your stuff, right? You pick up something, bang, nose itches, always. Uh, I, I sit down and I, you know, get, all right, turn the camera on, let's go. Nose itches. <sighs> Life's tough sometimes. Sorry about that. Anyway, what are we talking about? Oh, um, when subwoofer is a high pass filter. So we, we have to define what we're talking about. So is it two channel or, or home theater? And typically in home theater applications, we, we do high pass filter the main speaker. And uh, do we all know wh what I'm referring to. The, w what he's saying is, if you take uh, a full range speaker and you add a subwoofer to it to complement its bass response, wouldn't it be better to take the full range speaker and, and eliminate some of the bass frequencies that goes to that speaker so that it has less work to do? So that's what he's referring to. And in a lot of cases, in home theater applications, there it is, my head itches, um, the that's exactly what they do. But in two-channel situations, I am not an advocate of it. Yes, there are advantages, but everything that we do comes with what I like to call baggage. So there's the good news and there's the bad news. You've identified the good news. The bad news is several fold. One, we have to put the effects of the high pass filter into the equation, right? Now, to you certainly don't want to have a high pass filter on the output so that the output of your power amplifier is high pass filtered. So you want to do that on the input. And every time you add a crossover element to an amplifier, you're going to change the way it sounds. You've got phase shift involved, you've got uh, an extra bit of electronics for it to go through. So you'd better make darn sure that you got a really good reason that you want to add that, that the benefits really are going to outweigh the disadvantages of just how the filter sounds, okay? So that's, and, and that filter is, if it's just a simple 6 dB per octave filter, could be as simple as a series capacitor. But if you want to do a 12 dB per octave filter, now you're going to add active electronics and now you're running it through a whole nother stage and there's where you know the hair on the back of my neck starts going up like yeah I don't want all that crap in my in my system I don't even want the cap but that's another story so that's one reason we don't want to add that extra filtering if we're working with doing as little harm to the signal as possible and we're talking about a high resolution high-end audio system this, the second reason, and this, this, is, this is a personal opinion from me, I believe that every full range loudspeaker is designed to its perfection within its abilities. Okay? I trust a high performance loudspeaker designer to have built the best he can within a certain 
range of operation. So that full range speaker, whatever it may be, I'm going to say that designer did the best he could to make that sound great. And what a subwoofer should do is augment that great speaker, not replace what it's doing. I've been a big advocate of this for a long, long time. Subwoofers should enhance, should never be heard, should only come up and just fill in the gaps where your loudspeaker can't be full range. And unless you have a big box or a servo controlled woofer within a, a smaller box that is part of your main speaker, then you need a subwoofer. Because unless you have that, you don't have full range bass. And if you're like me, how much, you know, you don't want to miss out on the music. How much of the frequency range are you willing to miss out on? There's information on those albums and those records and those CDs that I don't want to miss out on, whether it's the noise of the air conditioner or people shuffling around on their feet, whatever. If that was part of the recorded experience, and often it is, that gives me a sense of realism that I don't get any other way. And I certainly don't get it with my main speaker. So I want my main speaker left virgin, alone. Leave it alone, set it up as best you can, then add a sub gently and carefully to augment and fill in the areas where your main speaker doesn't perform up to snuff, and you will have an amazing system. Thanks. Good question. Talk to you tomorrow. Bye.